Terry O'Kelly is a technical communications manager for Memorex, one of Amation's portfolio brands and the largest provider of recordable DVDs at U.S. retail. This is the backbone of an optical disc. It's just a clear piece of plastic with millions of pits molded into it from the center in a spiral pattern working their way to the outside edge of the disc. It's not really legible at this point though, not until we put a mirror layer behind it. That allows the laser to shine its light onto the mirror, have the light bound straight back to a sensor. That becomes a digital one. However, if the laser light hits the edge of a pit and scatters, the light does not go back. That's a digital zero. All light is is visible energy. All that energy appears in the colors of a rainbow. At the low end of the spectrum are the red colors with their long wavelengths. As we move higher into the region towards the blue and the violet sections, we get higher frequencies and much smaller wavelengths. Red lasers with their long wavelengths work perfectly well with the relatively large pits that appear on CDs. We need ruby red lasers for the slightly smaller pits that appear on DVDs. For HD DVD and for Blu-ray, we need the smallest wavelengths possible to fit in the smallest pits possible in the disc. That's why the lasers for these discs are blue-violet. The precise work of manufacturing blue laser media is something you'd probably expect to see at a factory in Asia. And in fact, close to 90% of all blue laser media is made in Taiwan and Japan. India manufactures nearly all the rest. Those factories have built multi-million dollar production lines, each capable of producing either Blu-ray or HD DVD. But inside Animation's Discovery Center, in a space about the size of your local gap, resides the world's only modular manufacturing facility capable of producing all four recordable blue formats. And it's also the only place in the Americas where you can see blue discs in production. In 2005, Imation invested over $10 million in advanced optical products. Of that investment, most of it went to the development of HD, DVD, and Blu-ray technology. In our modular manufacturing facility here at Imation, we have seven major pieces of equipment. Of those seven major pieces of equipment, five of them can be used on either Blu-ray or HD DVD. So it creates very flexible manufacturing capabilities. But what gave Amation the confidence to invest so heavily in this new blue technology while many other optical media brands have opted to purchase their inventory from overseas manufacturers? Perhaps the answer stems from the company's long-standing history of innovation, dating back to its 3M roots. At 3M, we were working on uh, developing a new class of light emitters. Uh, we wanted to develop a device that was going to emit a color of light that was never emitted before from semiconductor devices. And we knew that if we could generate uh, lasers that emitted blue light, that we were going to be able to go to higher recording densities, giving people the ability to store more information on the same size of optical disc. There was a large fraction of the world that just believed this could not be done. Then we came across a, a, a new technique that hadn't been used before in making these types of materials for light emitters. And uh, lo and behold, we were actually able to generate the properties that, that the theory said couldn't be done. And this discovery was the precursor to making first devices that would, would emit blue light, and then later on to use those devices, add some refinements, and make lasers that emitted blue and blue-green light. Uh, today, uh, blue light emitters will allow people to make optical recording discs that have greater capacity, and this will provide users with the ability to store more information and to store high-definition video on a single disc. Today, Jim DePute leads a team of 22 scientists, engineers, and manufacturing specialists who have dedicated the past three years to the study of blue laser recording. In addition to their experienced blue team, Amation also has the state-of-the-art equipment required at every step of the production process for both Blu-ray and HD DVD. I'm with Ted Bonds. He's a mastering engineer here at Amation. And Ted, I understand that you can show us a little bit about how a blue disc is mastered. Is that the first step of the production process? Well, no, not quite, Gary. The first thing we'll have to do is gown up first. All this? Is that, is that really necessary? Yes, Gary. Well, you're the boss. Ted, how do I look? Almost ready. Ah, uh, glasses. So Ted, what exactly are we seeing here? Well, the first step in the manufacturing process for any optical media 
is the mastering process. This is uh, known as the recording part, and what we have here is a deep UV mastering bench. This is one of nine uh, in the world, and it's capable of doing any type of commercial format. What we have here is that after the recording has been completed, all of the data features now are completed on the master. So all discs from this point on contain all of these features that are on this master. Wow, this looks very different now, Ted. Yes, what we have here, after the grooves have been inspected, we coat this with a very thin layer of nickel. And this is important during the stamping process where a negative image will be created from the master. Ted, we're talking about incredible densities on this disc. Give me an idea, something that I can relate to. If we imagine these tracks as being a thread and we unravel the thread off of the disc, that length would be 17 miles. How do you do? Nice to meet you. This is Barry Brobold. He's a stamping engineer at Amation, and Ted sends his regards, and he also sends this finished master. So what do you do with it? Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> what we do with the master now is we, we have a proprietary process that we, we can duplicate the image of this onto another surface, that being with photopolymer onto a plastic. And what we will come up with after that, something that looks like this. So it's, and it's a mirror image of the master. It's a mirror image of the master. So from here it goes into a molding. Yes, it goes to the molding process where it can uh, make thousands or hundreds of thousands of uh, duplicates. Hi, Gary. Hey, Barry sends his best, and he also sent over this uh, stamper, and I'm, I'm just curious, what do you do with this from here? Well, we take the stamper, and Doug here, he installs it into the molding cavity. Once we have the stamper in place, we take a molten polycarbonate and inject it into the mold. In there, it then takes the exact replica of the features from the stamper and puts it onto the substrate. Once we have our substrate, we then need to put some sort of a recordable layer on the disc. One method is thin film coating. The machine next to me does thin film coating. It can do multiple layers based on what product we want to make, whether it's Blu-ray or HD DVD. There's different layers put on in different order based on whatever the product needs are. Another method for putting on a recordable layer is spin coating. In spin coating, we put a recordable die on the disc, and then using centrifugal force, we spin it out. The next step in the process is a metallization process. In that process, we use um, sputter coating to put a thin layer of metal onto the disc for reflectivity. Now that we have our coated discs, the next step in the process is bonding. For bonding, what we are doing is taking the disc and we put a thin layer of adhesive on with a spin coating process. After that, we take a dummy disc and we place it precisely on top of the coated disc with the adhesive on it. Once it goes into the vacuum chamber, all the air is removed. The next step is to go into the UV cure. For HD DVD disc, after the disc has been bonded, we now have the recording layer sandwiched in the middle of the disc. For Blu-ray, the recording layer is sitting just below the cover layer, which is very close to the surface of the disc. Some discs require initialization. Initialization process is where a laser crystallizes the recording surface of the disc. The crystallization process converts the recording layer of the disc, allowing it to be written to by the laser in your drive. What makes the blue optical technology uniquely different from other formats is the capacity, random access capability, and volumetric storage capability of the media, along with the open format and the fact that it's a standard format. It, it just represents a tremendous opportunity for professionals and business people for storage. And that capacity can be used for video, for example, with uh, the new high-definition camcorders that are coming, or set-top recorders in the future that are going to be recording high-definition programming from either cable or over the air. We're in a good position to lead in this area because we have been involved in optical technology for more than 25 years. We were there when video disc was created and we've been involved in optical since that time until the present. So we understand optical disc technology like many